Hello, welcome homebrewers, brew tubers, craft beer drinkers, and general voyagers of YouTube. Welcome back to the Blue Trouser Brewery. I am Owen, and uh, what are we brewing today? We are brewing up a American Pale Ale, a uh, hazy Pale Ale, um, with a bit of a difference that this is a low ABV nice session summer drinking pale ale. Um, so this video is actually a rebrew of a beer that I made um, not too long ago. It was the brew before last. The last brew was a bitter. It was a rebrew of the Persistently Bitter, which if you haven't seen my video on that, I think it was on the hand pull video that I did. The uh, Pints 365 review, go check that out. Um, I'll put a link up here. The actual, actually a double batch uh, rebrew of a pale ale that I did recently. And I got the inspiration to make this beer from uh, Cloudwater. And they put out fairly recently, probably about th three months ago, they put out like a line of pale ales, which uh, they just called like pale ale number one, number two, number three, I'm not quite sure how far they went with them, but I tried one, two, three, and four, and they were just minor adaptations of the same, uh, effectively the same beer, um, just changing up the hot profile, maybe making minor changes to the, to the malt bill, uh, maybe the yeast or the water, I'm not too sure. They weren't massively different, to be fair, uh, side by side, but um, they were very, very good. They were really nice beers. And at 3.9%, the thing that I was impressed about most was the overall body of the beer. So this is a, a very low ABV at, at high 3%, but it's almost um, a New England style um, beer. So it was pretty thick um, but not super thick considering the ABV but it but it had body uh, it was super juicy um, and it was just a beer that I really really enjoyed and, and it got my mind ticking over as to whether it was possible to replicate something similar at a homebrew level and I felt that it was possible to do so I had a crack and I was extremely pleased with the result. Um, the keg lasted next to no time. I actually ended up bottling a load and taking it on holiday with me. Um, and my brother-in-law, father-in-law, and myself uh, smashed through it quite happily. But it's just a lovely beer to drink because you get all of the the perks of drinking a New England IPA without the head banging aspect of drinking like a six or seven percent beer so you can have uh you know three or four of them without um being absolutely destroyed so it's perfect for summer drinking and um yeah just a good a good old session so um i'll talk you through briefly in terms of i'm going to check out my brew log uh, so this was a 23 litre batch which i fermented in the firmzilla um, and the grist was three kilos of golden promise, 500 grams of flaked oats, 250 grams of wheat malt, 240 grams of torrified wheat and 200 grams of chit malt. Now, if you've not brewed with chit malt before, it is a, um, a very light colored, um, malt that has, is very high in dextrins. So it's not dissimilar to, um, oh, what malt am I thinking of? Carapils. It's not dissimilar to carapils, but it adds less um, flavor and color. Um, and I've been using it quite a bit and I'm really enjoying it. So it adds um, some really nice dextrins to the, to the beer, which adds in turn body. So you can hear within that grist, um, quite a lot of uh, flaked um, adjuncts going into the beer, as you would expect. Uh, wheat malt, again, adding body, chip malt, adding body, golden promise, lovely. 
in terms of a base malt to add sweetness to the beer, which again is what you're looking for. So some of the things I considered here in terms of achieving a low ABV New England style pale ale um, with a really big body was really two or three things. I've already mentioned obviously using things like chip malt and car uh, carapils, using lots of oats and wheats, which you would expect in that sort of recipe. But also, I mashed the beer at 70 degrees C. I wasn't quite brave enough to go to 71, but I mashed it at 70, um, which is obviously going to add a lot of um, long chain starches, which the yeast is going to have a hard time uh, converting uh, across to alcohol. Uh, and therefore, it will remain residual within the beer. So the final gravity of the beer actually ended at 10.11, the target was 1012, so it's quite a high finishing gravity for a low ABV beer. Um, the original gravity was 1042, that was the target, came in at 1041. So I ended up a sort of point, point below for both the uh, pre bore gravity, the, um, the original gravity, as well as the final gravity, which was absolutely fine about the ABV came in bang at. 3.9%. Um, and on to obviously the exciting part. I went with four different hops at an equal, in fact, if you include the bittering hop, five hops. But um, I added the four hops, the flavour and aroma hops, in equal measure. And those were Citra, Mosaic, Simcoe, and Galaxy. Um, I used a Columbus, a very small Columbus first watt edition uh, for roughly 23 IBUs. So it has a little, a little bitterness. The Bugu ratio was just over 0.5, so relatively low, which you would expect this style. The colour was pretty low at 6.1 EBC, and it did come out a really lovely uh, light yellow, hazy yellow colour, uh, which is what I think personally makes a very appealing looking um, hazy beer. I used Verdant IPA yeast. So um, I've used this yeast maybe one or two times before. Um, not had brilliant results with it, but uh, it worked really, really well in this beer. It chucked absolutely loads of really gorgeous apricot flavours. Um, and the fermentation fridge just smelled incredible uh, whilst this was fermenting out. I didn't ferment this out under pressure, uh, I just left the um, um, the pressure relief valve open so it effectively acts as a, a one-way uh, airlock. Uh, I didn't want to suppress any of the potential yeast esters um, which would likely have happened if I'd fermented under pressure. Um, so I left it pretty much uh, unchecked in terms of that regard so mash schedule was um was 70 degrees did a mash out 76 sparged and um fermented this at 20 degrees for seven days bumped it up for a couple of days um pulled it down to 12 degrees for the dry hop a dry hop for two days um and then crashed it down to one degree c for roughly one day and then um Close transfer uh, to a keg and um, the benefit of this the style of beer is you can tend to start drinking quite quickly and uh, that I did and it disappeared equally quickly uh, so hence the reason why I decided to rebrew it but as a double batch my plan is to send out a good number of these it's beer mails so I thought it was just wise um, so yeah, that was uh, that was the uh, original beer that I put together. In terms of tasting notes, um, brilliant body in terms of the ABV, um, a really incredible hop um, flavour and aroma from the beer. Uh, I was extremely pleased with the outcome and um, I thought it was very, very close to kind of what I was trying to emulate in terms of a, an overall vision for the beer. Um, and I'm pleased overall that I'm sort of getting uh, to the stage now where I can try a beer and think, you know what, 
yeah, I can I can probably figure out the recipe um, close enough to be able to produce something uh, certainly very similar. So, uh, yeah, really, really pleased on that front. Um, cool. So I've done some brood -y footage for you guys. Um, as always, a little bit of uh, slow-mo brood -y footage going on. Uh, which I'm going to cut to now, so enjoy that, and then I'll be back to uh, talk you through um, the actual beer with the tasting, and uh, you guys can see how it came out. Welcome back guys, so it's uh, time for the tasting. So here she is, so I've got loads of uh, mosquitoes flying around my giant light box I've got right here. Um, yeah, here she is. She's looking good, looking very nice. So off the bat, this is the second iteration then of uh, this pale ale, this session pale ale I've been uh, uh, trying to hone. And uh, this time made a double batch, not a single batch. and. Um, I made some minor adjustments to the recipe, just tweaked it ever so slightly. So I changed the grist. Um, I split the base malt between Golden Promise and Pilsner malt. That's purely because I didn't have enough Golden Promise. Um, and I also added just a touch, only 150 grams um, of Munich malt. So I just wanted to try experimenting with adding just a little more sweetness. Um, and I think that worked well. I also changed out one of the hops. So I took Galaxy out and I put uh, Amarillo in. Um, the first iteration was super juicy. It just had a little bit of a... Um, a hoppy, perceived kind of hop bitterness that I wasn't quite looking for. Um, I just wanted kind of out and out juice. And um, yeah, I thought maybe that might have been kind of coming from the Galaxy and that would have been from the Whirlpool. So I changed out for Amarillo just to sort of give it a little test. And if I'm honest, this is this version is still really, really good. I'm very, very pleased with it. I'm pleased I've got two kegs of it. I mean, the, the, the color is um, like a really nice um, darkish yellow bordering onto very, very light orange. Really, really good head retention. Uh, and, you know, this comes out with a nice, a nice dollop of uh, meringue kind of head on there. Um, so I'm really, really pleased with how visually the beer looks. Um, yeah, on the nose, super hoppy, um, and I'm kind of getting 
Can I get in like a vanilla -y apricot thing from, I think probably from primarily the yeast actually. And I'm getting a citrus vibe, but it's not not quite as wickedly hoppy as the first one. Kind of just getting like a juicy tropical thing on the nose. You know, it's good. I don't think the I don't think the body is quite as good. Um, it's not quite got that wow factor that I was looking from 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 the first beer, um, which I'm really disappointed about having decided to do a double batch, and I'm struggling to put my finger on as to why it didn't come out as well. I don't think it's the grist. I mean, the Pilsner malt maybe has reduced the body or the impression of body a little bit because it's not quite as sweet. I'm not sure what the Munich malt has really brought to the beer other than changing the colour slightly. Almost everything else about this beer was the same. All the, the, the stats and stuff um you know the 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 original gravity the finishing gravity uh the ABV so you know overall i'm really pleased uh with this beer you know it's it's it is super sessionable it's juicy um it slips down beautifully it's 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 just crushable you know it is a crushable beer and I think actually for the fact that I created this recipe myself, I'm really pleased um, with it overall. I think when I brew it again, I'm just going to try and bump up the amount of kind of flaked adjuncts in there. I'm um, trying and kind of get that body back to where it once was on the first version. Um, and I think I will also up the dry hop rate so I went sort of 200 grams for a 23 litre batch um, I will probably be pushing that more to the kind of 250 300 um, area I think that's sort of 16 grams per litre something in that region uh, currently this is at about um, 12 I think no it's 8.7 um yeah so it's um it's not intended to be as hopped as a New England IPA I think it would probably overpower it um but I would like to up it a little bit and just try and increase that juiciness a little bit you know it's it's that thing we're all chasing uh when you're making this style of beer isn't it and uh I'm not quite sure what it is that I did the first time that nailed it as well as I did and I really need to figure that out so I can repeat it. So cheers guys. Um, if you would like to try out brewing this recipe um, I will post a link to the original version uh, because I think that was superior and um, you know have a go I think it's really really good um, my recommendation if you are going to brew it is make sure that you do uh, if you can uh, do close transfer uh, almost definitely put it in a keg and not bottle and um, just make sure you use as, as fresh ingredients as you possibly can um, but uh, yeah appreciate you watching the video um, if you enjoyed the content, then you know hit the like button. It really helps me out on the channel, helps me grow the channel, and um, subscribe if you aren't subscribed already. So thanks, guys. It's been lovely chatting to you this evening, and I will bid you adieu.